Okay, once again, this is research, so don't bump it off, because I, I was being bumped off, but I've been showing this. that I, I have 2,100 papers, 140 highly cited mention my work. So, this is not just silly stuff, so stay with me, because we're going to find out that there are some silly things going on, but not from my side. Okay, my friends, just to wet your whistle, or as we say in the electronic world, to hydrate your oral venturi, this is light. This is a regular light. That is light accelerating. Light is a particle. Light speeds up. Light concusses. Light explodes. Light actually can separate between a strong and a, and a weak force. There's the black and the white particles. We can separate those. You will see it happen. Light accelerates. Light slows down. It spins. It is a particle. Einstein was wrong about, well, looks like to me everything. Now, let's see what we, I can show. All right, there's certain things that they base this on, and, and it's violated. It's not working, so here's what she has to say. The versality seems to be violated. Well, what that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. That's it. We found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. All right, exactly. Now, the re what they're going to do, though, is they're going to say, well, everything's right. The neutron's right. The proton's right. Everything's right. So there's just some extra particle we never saw before. We'll work it in somehow. And they will. They'll figure some way of Mickey Mouse it into the system. But what it really is, is everything is made out of the electrons. I'm going to show you this. I have very, very good supporting evidence. And now that woman was from the uh, Royal Institution. They have 800 and something thousand followers there of the biggest geeks in the world. That was where Mendeleev and all these people made their statements from. And they realized, now this is not right. It's totally not right. However, they do, they're not looking for electron flood theory where everything is constructed of electrons. That's a nucleus of all little electron particles glued together. And then when they hit something, the white ones explode, the black ones just roll away. You will see it. Here's another. It came out right at the same time, uh, December last year, right? About six, seven months ago. And um, the new boson appears in nuclear decay, breaks the standard model. They know it's wrong. But they're digging through chunks like this. Where do you see what we're digging through? We're digging through the particles of the tiniest bits of particles. So we don't have to guess. We're seeing light itself, and we're seeing it divide. And, and I don't see how anybody can dispute that. Okay, my friends, if you have been around here at all, Mud Fossil University, you know I am deep into electron theory, and not only that, subatomic theory, which is the nucleus, which is proven to be a totally wrong. And they agree that it is wrong, but they have no clue what to do about it. They, they're still hanging on to this proton-neutron nucleus, which is it is not. And I will ex show this in extreme detail. And this is light. Light is the smallest particles there are. Light is, is the smallest it gets. And, but everything is made of light. And I could show that too. And when light hits something, it gets incorporated into it. That's what heat is. It, it moves into it. Light is, constructs everything. And I will show how elegant that construction is. And light can be accelerated. It is a particle. So far, there is nothing that we have heard from mainstream science that is correct about the nucleus and about subatomic particles. When they bind together, they, they know different molecular attractions, repulsions, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, all of that stuff. Yes, absolutely. You could see it. But when you get into the nucleus, into where these particles reside, you're in a whole other world and they, they have no clue about it. This is a Venturi. Rod Warren discovered this just by accident. When I saw this thing, I went insane because you know, I, this is, how could you possibly miss this? How, there's nobody, an eight-year-old, a five-year-old can see that that is not going to accelerate on its own. However, when it went through this Venturi, it accelerated. You're not supposed to accelerate. Lines, oh, no, 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 you can't accelerate. It's not a particle. Absolutely, it's a particle. And it spins. And this actually is the particle. And it is constructed of an explosive portion and a literal 
non-reactive portion. They call that a boson, they call these the fermions. Now, in, in my estimation of what's going on here, that's a bar magnet. That's a bar magnet. That could be considered a bar magnet. That could be, but it's a box of magnetism that offsets each other, and we call it a photon. Now, the reason we're seeing it look like this is it's just about to explode at the Venturi, which concusses everything, and then these will split right apart. And I'll show you that. And it is a spinning particle, and it is slowing, and this is the particle's path. It's turning to the right, which means it drifts to the left, and it is slowing as it goes up here. There's no question about it. Now, this is exceptional photography by Rod Warren. So, a tremendous discovery. It's being totally overlooked. Because it, it just goes way outside the borders of physics right now. They don't understand this, and they, they need to understand it. They need to at least look at it. Now, this came back through the Venturi, and not in the, the way all the rest did. It came in as a white particle, uh, I mean came out as a white particle instead of one of these fields. And now you can see it's concussing with one of these fields and it's giving off a particle that is different than light. Now I don't know if it's in the transitional phase from moving from one particle you know, from one particle, well, let's just say it's an anti-particle, I don't know what it is, but I can see that it's different, and I believe that it's spinning backwards, gathering the field to win in itself. The other ones are throwing it outside. At some point, I believe it's like an anti-tornado. <laughs> These are tornadoes. And it's like, I, I don't know, but you can see what you see. These are things that need to be looked at and thought about. I have no clue, maybe it's something that would be exotic particle that could be, we could make these come all the time and it'd do something special. I have no idea. But that's why I, all this stuff stimulates me and I enjoy it. But you saw those were in a box of particles. I've shown this a zillion times and people get all upset. Oh, you keep showing it over and over. Well, nobody's paying attention, so I'm going to show it until somebody pays attention to it. And it gets looked at in mainstream science. They're not looking at it. So what do you do? You just walk away? No, I'm not going to do it. There's your box of particles. When they hit here, the black ones just walk right away from the white ones, and the white ones explode exactly identical to what they are looking for. And here's the real key, is this, is, this particle is spinning. All right, whoops, we're spinning this way. Oh, it's, uh, spinning, it's a right-hand spin coming in. And when it went through the Venturi, it spins this way, it spins this way. You see it? It's coming through, it spins, 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 spins. Some go this way, and if it comes from the underside, it goes this way. And the rod has that. You can see the top ones are redder than the bottom ones. And they cross over each other. And that's, anyway, and you could, I, I'm going to show you, I might as well show you the whole nine yards here. But these are, now they're considering this possibly the dark matter. And I agree with that, because originally we had a box of particles. Now. It's, it's extremely obvious that the black particle is no longer attached to the white particle. No question whatsoever. And the black particles are laying on top of each other like they could just be existing out there. We never knew they were there. And the only reason that they're being displayed now is because of the whiteness reattaching to it. Because here, this is nothing but white here. There is no blackness here. There's nothing but white. So it's not like these are just excited and, and, and still stay together. No, absolutely not. The black ball is around it. The black balls are around it. Whether those are just the ones that got pushed off of these chunks or whether they just laying out there forever waiting to attach to something extremely energetic like this. That I don't know. It, but it could, they could be the dark matter. So there's a lot to look at here. It's not just something, you know, it's not just cartoons. This is real physics. And I'm telling you right now, I, I don't think there's anything that's not made of these two particles, which is the black ball and a white ball. And when they just keep combining together at a certain frequency, boom, they lock in. And, 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 and a bigger chunk, boom, they lock in. A bigger chunk, boom, they lock in. That's your 
periodic table. But between every one of these elements, there is thousands and thousands of additional electrons that allow for not just copper zinc, but it, you know, there's a ton of different particles that are like transitional and and, and able to facilitate the movement of all of these molecules into other forms, other substances, minerals, food, all the things you need to exist. And the enzymes and the proteins, absolutely phenomenal. DNA and RNA and all that stuff, just amazing, amazingly complex. And, they, oh, and it, there is literally no way whatsoever, no way, that you could account for all the isotopes and all of the variations without all of these additional particles. The proton-neutron never worked. And now it's, they admit it doesn't work, and I am showing you what does work. And it is nothing more than a compilation, compilation of electrons. In what, uh, it appears to be that they're pretty close on the money, that, that at every 1,838 or so, electrons, it, it makes another zone of stability. That's what it appears to be. And then, and then, as those keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you need more and more and more and more of these zones of stability, but then they get more and more movable because there's so much to them that they can be pushed apart. And even like metals and so forth, they're, they're malleable. But there's so much complexity to the nucleus that you can you you can heat them up and they'll move and they'll transfer and the iron will change and this and that and they'll mix together alloys and everything. That's what my father did. He was a general manager for uh, Allegheny Ludlum Steel Corporation. Uh, um, well, here's right here. It's that's my father. <laughs> That's a, that's a 1936 stainless steel Ford. <laughs> there was only six of them made. And Henry Ford wanted to make stainless steel cars. And, and they were just too hard to work with. The sta stainless steel, very, very tough metal to work with. But that was Wallingford Steel, Allegheny Ludlam Steel Corporation. This was a special alloys division. And I put the floorboards in this car. We rebuilt this car. I put the floorboards in there. It's a body by Fisher. <laughs> and the floorboards were red oak. They were boards. Okay, I might have already showed this, but I'm going to show it again, and I'm going to leave it at this. Now, that is the red light accelerating. That's the particle. That's the venturi. We could see it separate the black from the white, which is the bosons and the fermions. It is electronic flood theory, which replaces the atomic nucleus with electrons and that's all there is that exists is electrons and in a new uh, a helium you would have 7350 electrons and the positives basically move towards the center and the negatives would always in every molecule uh, in, well in every molecule but every atom itself, they would always be on the outside edge of the nucleus. So the more electrons that want to come in to get to the positives, it would hold them at bay. That's what the quantum distance is. But there's a certain amount of pull that is going to control how many extra electrons are suspended in the, the literal fluid of space. And not only is it fluid here on Earth, it's fluid in a vacuum of space. It's not a vacuum. There's all these particles of light. These same particles, they're all in here too. But they're out coming to us from the sun. I mean, it's, it's just it's so simply obvious. Anyway, so we end up with electrons, which are positive and negative dipoles. And one side has power, which is the negative, which we always considered they were just negative zone. No. The other side is a dark force. It's just a carrier. It's a weak force. So, I think I've shown the rest. And the rest means that they're not, nobody's pushing anybody around because they're same temperature. That's all it is. Once the, te the molecules are established, they're pretty secure. They're, they're not looking to do much changing. They will. They'll change a little bit. But normally it's heat. It's something that that 
makes them, forces them into each other, that makes them begin to change their molecular structure. And then that, that's which how you cook things and you burn things and you fuse metals together and all that stuff. Really, um, we got to look at it in the electron flood model. It works.